Hey everyone, in this lab demo video, we are going to be comparing the respiratory systems of a shark, a bird, and a cow. So in this case, we are using a dogfish shark for our shark, a quail for our bird, and obviously the cow we will use to demonstrate the mammalian respiratory system. So we're gonna start out with the dogfish shark. So in these animals, the circulatory and respiratory systems are very closely intertwined. As you can see in these diagrams that show the gills as well as the different parts of the circulatory system that are very closely connected to the respiratory system. And the reason the circulatory and respiratory systems are so closely related is because the heart pumps unoxygenated blood to the gills for oxygenation and then their oxygenated blood is distributed to the body. So I'm just going to give you guys a really quick overview of how the process of respiration occurs in sharks and then we'll show you guys the gills and how that's connected to the circulatory system. So sharks need to get their oxygen from the water. So they need to constantly be taking in water to get that oxygen. And the way this happens is the gill slits close and the pharyngeal chamber expands to suck in the water. And once the pharynx is filled, the shark closes its mouth and the gill chambers expand and fill with water. Then the gill slits open and the chambers constrict to flush out the water. So sharks essentially breathe through their gills as the gills are where the gas exchange primarily takes place. So the shark has six pairs of gill slits and the first gill slit, which is called the spiracle, is the circular opening that is behind each eye. And obviously the spiracles do not have the external gills, so instead they allow the water to flow inward toward the oral cavity and then out through the other slits when the shark closes its mouth. So in other words, the spiracles have a one-way valve. And we'll talk more about the circulatory system of the shark in our next lab video. But as you can see in this video, we have stripped off the mucous membrane from the roof of the mouth of the shark. And if you look carefully, you can see the four pairs of blood vessels that carry blood from the gills toward the midline. And you can see that there are actually fine branches of these vessels in the gill lamellae where the gas exchange occurs. So you can see that in the clip here, all those tiny little blood vessels. And in the sharks and also in fish in general, the water that contains lots of oxygen flows in a counter current direction to the blood and that allows for efficient exchanges of oxygen and carbon dioxide. So as water passes over the gill membranes, tiny blood vessels extract the oxygen from the water Meanwhile, the carbon dioxide waste also passes from the shark's blood and out of its body through the gill tissue. Okay, so next we're going to show you all the bird respiratory system in the quail. Now, just to give a quick overview about what happens in the bird respiratory system, the first important thing you need to know is that birds have a unidirectional airflow. Now, this is a really crucial adaptation for flight because birds have really small lungs that can't inflate since they don't have a diaphragm or pleural cavity like we do. So gas exchange occurs between the air capillaries and blood capillaries. Because the respiratory system has evolved so much for flight with the unidirectional airflow, birds are able to utilize almost 100% of the air, which is really neat and very different from humans, for instance. So when fresh air is first inspired through the bird's nostrils, it travels through the trachea, which splits into the left and right primary bronchi, each of which leads to a lung. The inspired air travels down each primary bronchus and then divides. Some air enters the lungs where gas exchange occurs, while the remaining air fills the posterior air sacs. Then during the first expiration, the fresh air in the posterior air sacs enters the lungs to undergo gas exchange. The spent air in the lungs is displaced by the incoming air and flows out of the body through the trachea. Then during the second inspiration, fresh air enters the posterior air sacs and lungs again, and the spent air in the lungs is displaced by the incoming air, but it can't exit through the trachea because fresh air is flowing inward. So the spent air instead from the lungs enters the anterior air sacs 
So during the second expiration, the spent air in the anterior air sacs and in the lungs flows out through the trachea, and fresh air in the posterior air sacs enters the lungs for gas exchange. So in sum, birds require two parcels of air to complete one full respiration cycle. So in these clips, we are going to show you the different parts of the avian respiratory system, and we'll even get to inflate the air sacs. First, what you can see we're doing is we have to find the cloaca, and I'm using my fingers to grab it and start tearing away the very thin epidermis. And I'm exposing all the way up the body to the corner of the beak so that we can see the trachea in the neck region. And it's important to note that the trachea is less muscular than the esophagus, and you can see horizontal striations going down that tube. Next, I'm going to cut down the margins of the beak area on both sides of the junction of the maxilla and the mandible so we can get better access to the glottis. Now what we're doing is just tearing through the peritoneum, which is holding in all these abdominal intestines, and you guys will get a look at those in a sec. But meanwhile, notice the pectoralis, which is the big downstroke muscle that's really important for bird flight, hence the reason why it's the largest muscle in the bird's body. The supracoracoideus is located underneath the pectoralis and is the muscle responsible for the upstroke in bird flight. Okay, now back to the respiratory system. So the glottis is that tiny little opening here that's on the bottom of the mouth, and it's generally thought of as the primary valve between the lungs and the mouth. Now that we have the glottis, we are going to stick a glass tube down the trachea, and you can see it going down here. Also, once again, notice that the trachea is less muscular than the esophagus, and we can blow a little air into, into it and inflate the air sacs. So you can see that here, those air sacs inflating, it looks like a little bubble. And also note that the abdominal air sacs are below the flight muscles and the thoracic air sacs are underneath the lip of the rib cage and the pectoralis. And these air sacs are really thin, flexible sacs, and yeah, that's all for the avian respiratory system. Now finally, we will be talking about the mammalian respiratory system, and we want to actually show you guys the cow lungs because they're really cool, and it's really interesting to see the process of respiration occurring in these lungs. And in our demo, you guys will see that we will be manually inflating the lungs by pumping air down through the trachea, but naturally the mammalian respiratory systems rely on the diaphragm, which is the single large muscle at the base of the lungs, and the diaphragm pulls the lungs downward to increase their volume, and that causes air to rush into the lungs, and then as it presses upward, the lungs become smaller and the air is exhaled and the muscles in the rib cage work with the diaphragm to expand and contract the lungs. So as you can see, these lungs are massive and there's a ton of surface area here so that they can absorb a lot of oxygen. So what you can see we're doing is we are actually going to inflate the lungs by pumping air into the trachea where the oxygen will travel down the bronchi into the bronchioles and finally the alveoli where gas exchange will take place. Now you can see the lungs inflating and the alveoli really provide a ton of that surface area for gas exchange to occur. And it's important to know that the alveoli are covered in lots of tiny capillaries. So the oxygen from the alveoli is absorbed by the blood in these capillaries and in exchange, the alveoli absorb the carbon dioxide from the capillaries, which is then exhaled from the body it goes back out the bronchioles and the bronchi through the trachea and larynx and out the mouth or nose. And the oxygen in the blood in the capillaries needs to get to the rest of the body. So stay tuned for the next video to learn about the mammalian circulatory system.